Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, the 62nd division and the 11th verse, God has spoken once. Twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God. Hallelujah. I came with some good news tonight. See, the psalmist in this text, he realized that God had spoken it once, but he had heard it numerous times. How many of you have heard it before that power belongs to God? And we can look around and we can see that power belongs to God. We can look in the Bible and we can see the events that have taken place that testifies that power belongs to God. And I like how the psalmist said that God only needed to say it once. It came out of him once. But if you look at everything, the acts of God, all the things that he has done, we know that God is sovereign. We know that there is no God like Jehovah. We know that is none greater than him. We know that with him all things are possible. We know that with him we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Just look at what he did when he sent his only begotten son Jesus into this earth to pay the price for our sins. There's none greater than our God. There's none that can stop our God. There's none that can stand before him. He is God almighty uh, and beside him uh, there is none other so if you are a child of God I came to remind you and it's good news hallelujah that you serve a God that is great uh, you serve a God that can do all things uh, you serve a God who spoke and it was uh, you serve a God who holds the balance of this world hallelujah he said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein. The earth is his footstool. Hallelujah. How great is our God and he's greatly to be praised. He's great because, hallelujah, he is God all by himself. And that's good news because we know that we are in good hands. to close one of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your sins. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. 
Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.